Natasha Graziano. Is that how you pronounce your last name? Mm -hmm. Such a pleasure having you. My uh, listeners are certainly in for a treat. Um, I'm just looking over your bio here, and there's so much to it. Ranked number one female motivational speaker under 40 by Forbes magazine, author of The Action Plan, The Law of Attraction. That's a big deal for you, huh? Big deal. I love it. Passionately. So, so for those that don't know what The Law of Attraction is, fill us in. Okay. Where do I start? I mean, the law of attraction is one of these things, right, Jason, that's happening whether you like it or not, right? It's mm -hmm. happening all around you. It's like it's here, it's going on, it's a law that's in action. Yes. So the thing to understand is your thoughts become things. Mm. What you think about becomes your reality. What you feel about becomes your reality. Mm. Your thoughts become your feelings. Your feelings become your habits. And you are your habits. You are your habits. See, I'm a big fan. That's, I live my whole life by the law of attraction and, you know, the ener law of energy, mm -hmm. right? There's positive, negative energy. And I've done a lot of research on you, and I know that's the whole world that you live too, right? Mm -hmm. You wake up with a, a full tank of gas, oh, right? Oh, yes. And you could choose to use your energy in a negative way or a positive way, right? And... You know, that's just like one little thing in life if people can start to master that, right? 100%. you got a choice every day. Mm -hmm. Are you going to show up at your highest yep. or are you going to allow circumstances, events, and people to bring you down? Mm -hmm. And we all have this fuel. We all have this tank. Mm -hmm. We all have this energy inside of us. We all have the same amount of hours in a day. Mm -hmm. And we should be infinite energy and excited like children. Yes. Right? We're both parents. And when mm -hmm. we look at our kids playing, it's wonderful. When you see them playing, they're full of life. They're just like running around. We should be like this. Exactly. And if we're not, we're out of alignment. Exactly. So um, so you've traveled to be here. You just moved from where? You said three countries? Thank, oh, my God. So okay. six months ago, I was living in London okay. my whole life. I got married, did a transatlantic move with my son, mm -hmm. moved to Vancouver. Okay. We still have our place there, but we just lived there for six months, and now we moved two days ago to L.A. So three countries in six months. <laughs> so what brought you to L.A.? Why, what's here? Filming, career, okay. uh, you know, got my podcast, okay. got so many cool things that I do here mm -hmm. in L.A. physically, um, and always traveling and speaking here, so yeah. it just made more sense for us to be in the place where the career is. Nice. Well, welcome to LA Thank or welcome so back, I guess. Thank you. Um, so, you married and a son? Mm -hmm. Is that right? How old is your son? My son's five. Five. You know the story about how me and my husband met, right? Well, that I want to <laughs> talk about. Yes. So, you manifested your basically your relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell that story. Let's just kind of get got into it. it. I, lo yes. I love how you preface that because that's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. I decided, I just want to say the red matches all the it red. It totally does. It's, it's like on amazing. brand. I no, isn't uh -huh. it amazing? Oh God, I love this studio so much. It's so dope. Um, so, okay. I decided after three years of being single, single mm -hmm. mom, I was like, I am ready to manifest love in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to actually meet the man of my dreams, right? I'm ready to find the one. Yep. What do I do? So I did my method. I did my process. And within three weeks of doing my method and my process, mm -hmm. there and behold, walks into my life, my husband. Mm -hmm. Three months later, we got married. Wow. <laughs> See, we got a lot in common here. <laughs> yes. So I didn't know I was manifesting my wife when I met her, but um, I did. And that was 24 years ago. And we met on April Fool's. I'm sorry, we met on Valentine's Day. And then we got married on April 1st. So only a month and a half of knowing each other. And we got married. And so, yeah, when oh, you ask God, the universe, right? The mm -hmm. universe sometimes gives you what you ask for. A hundred percent. When you put it out there, mm -hmm. I want this business. I want this much in the bank. I want to meet mm -hmm. the love of my life. I want. It happens. It does. And you and your wife are such a similar story. I didn't mm -hmm. know that. That's yes. beautiful. We have a five-year-old as well. No, we play do. dates. Oh, my we God, totally dude. Do. We need yep. to so connect. Uh -huh. That's so cool. Exactly. So while you're here, we'll have to get... My yeah. daughter's name is uh, is Brooklyn, and Brooklyn. she's the sweetest little girl. Yeah. Oh you will love her. I love that. <laughs> so cute. Oh, I love kids. And it's so nice when they meet kids their own age and then the parents have things in common and like it's just so nice yes. and I feel like it's harder when you go to schools and things because you're like 
you don't get to choose your friends. You mm. just are thrown at you, the parents of the children That's at the school. That's exactly right. Yep. And you're like, oh, mm -hmm. I would probably not naturally warm to particular individuals because maybe they're not as business mindset That's right. or they're not as mindful, whatever it might be. So uh -huh. it's actually nice when you meet people organically like you and I, like as friends where you genuinely like the person. It's like, oh my God, we have a kid the same age. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you know, it's really funny too is I was watching an interview of you um, and and, and it was brought up that we both have uh, similar inspiration. And, and that inspiration uh, is a Denzel Washington commencement speech that he gave, which literally changed my life. Like, seriously. And, and when I was watching an interview of you, um, and they brought that, I'm like, there's no way. And, and so the, f you know, fall forward, at, you know, commencement speech, right? Is that the one? Yes. That, oh, my that God. That was like my healing speech. I can't believe it. Seriously. What did it do for you? So, well, for one, it, you know, it, it, it changed my life, um, you know, because, you know, failure is, yeah. is important, right? We learn from our failure and, you know, and he's like, you know, I think he says, you know, I don't want to fall back, right? You don't want to fall back on anything. You want to fall forward, <sighs> right? Wow. And so I just kind of took that. And I'm like, yeah, fall forward. But what about fail forward? Fail forward, right? And so Is that you who, who created the fail forward thing? Well, I, I don't know if I created it, but I've got t-shirts about it. And that's oh, kind yeah. of my whole thing that's is you fail then. forward. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, so, and you know, everything from everything he talks about um, with regards to, you know, um, when you're at you know, your deathbed and you yeah. have all of the ghosts that come to you, right? You know what I'm talking about, I right? know it, it gives me chills, man, it's so real. And you're standing there and like, you know, what do you regret? Like, uh -huh. what, what didn't you do in I your life? I came to you and you didn't bring me to life, right? I came to you. Yeah, it's it's so powerful. I, I literally listen to that once a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah so do I. Mm -hmm. So do I. It's funny because once you tune into that speech, mm -hmm. you will forever more go back to it because you know what it did for you the first time. Yes. It's like a podcast. Like when people are listening to this right now, mm -hmm. they know what it did for them when mm -hmm. they listened to your podcast last week. So mm -hmm. they're going to come back again today because they know it's going to continually bring them benefits in their life. That's right. Yeah. So... So powerful. We'll put a link to that podcast video. And I, I, I it's, it's actually not a podcast. It's actually just a commencement speech Isn't that he it? did. Yeah, but so you should definitely listen to that. It's so yeah, much you power it's in so it. so good. Yes. Oh, my God. <clears throat> so let's get into your, your upbringing. So mm -hmm. First of all, you, you were brought up in the UK? Video. Yes, I was okay. brought up in... Um, I was brought up in the UK. I was yeah. born in the countryside. Okay. I was born, like, in... A farm basically okay i grew up with like cows and sheep as my best friends is that right yeah and okay. then like look at this now she's dressed in like an alien <laughs> bougie outfit like she does not look like <laughs> a farm girl and so i basically mm -hmm. moved to london okay and when i moved to london my life changed because yeah. i was like suddenly around like people and and i was 18 and it was all new and it was like you know a crazy i mean that's where my crazy journey began mm. um but i was a rebel at school like you know i'd already badly gotten into drugs and drink and um at school like okay. it was already not in a great place more alcohol than anything quit drinking at 18 decided i'm never going to touch stuff again good for you but the drugs i i hadn't found mm. a way out of but okay. i didn't know that i was gonna go into what happened later on in my life mm. um until i was thrown some crazy curveballs so uh i see so so i, I hear you were into gymnastics like pretty yes. good at that okay. oh my gosh mm -hmm. so uh in the beautiful parts of my years i was yeah until i was 13 i was a national gymnast okay. um for the south of england and it was it was amazing i competed i had a wonderful time and i was i loved dancing i loved doing gymnastics and i combined the two and it was something you know it taught me about competitiveness mm -hmm. it taught me about being the best at what you're good at that's right and knowing that if you don't show up mm -hmm. every single day and train if you don't show up and perform mm -hmm. someone else is going to take that medal from you that's right if you don't put a smile on your face when you're performing because people want to see this beautiful image mm -hmm. of you when you're performing in that way in gymnastics mm -hmm then you're going to look moody and the person who's smiling will just get five more points than you and you're doing the performance. That's right, yeah. Now, how did I apply that in their life? Because it was understanding that 
I, I always wanted to be ahead of the game. I always wanted to be ahead of the curve. I always wanted to, to be the best at something. And so then I became the best dancer. So mm. till I was 21, I was a dancer. I was the best. I was, you know, in the, all these top academies, et cetera. And mm. I, I just, I've carried that with me. So I've always had that like mad tenacity and drive. Mm. So when you were looking back, like, is that what you thought your future was going to be? You were just going to be a, a dancer or a professional, you go to maybe go to the Olympics? What, what were you thinking as a kid as where you would end up? You know, I wanted to be a dancer. Okay. But my parents said that won't give you any money. Sure. My dad was a doctor and they, they, they wanted us, I'm the oldest of five kids, they wanted us all to be doctors or lawyers or, you know, yeah. professionals in that way. And it just wasn't for me. Yeah. And so I rebelled so hard. I didn't even go to university. I hmm. rebelled so hard. I dropped out. I ran away. I was like, fuck this. Mm -hmm. I am so not wanting to be what everyone else wants me to be. Mm -hmm. I want to do something that uses my voice, but you know, I didn't know that I was going to go on and be a motivational speaker. I didn't know I was going to go on and be an author and mindset coach. I didn't know I was going to help save lives in yeah. the way that I do. Yeah. But it's beautiful to know that in this decade, this like chapter, this season, that I that, that that's what I do. That you get to do, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know, you know, parents, right? They put a lot of um, uh, pressure on kids, yes. you know, to do well in school, and someday you'll be a doctor, you'll be a lawyer, right? Um, you know, and so about 10, 15 years ago, I seen a TED talk mm -hmm. and it was a guy and he got up there and he ta started talking about why can't we raise kids to be entrepreneurs, right? Wow. It's perfectly okay to be an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm, as I'm watching this TED talk, I'm like, man, like I love this. And so I manifested him being my coach, my coach at some point. Back then I couldn't afford him as a coach, but I manifested it. I'm like, someday he'll be my coach, he was. right? And so uh, after my agency started to grow and we had enough resources, I just reached out to him randomly and said, hey, would you coach me? And uh, his name's Cameron Harold. And, uh, and then he reached back out. And, and so he's been my coach for like two and a half, three years now. That yeah. is yep. so beautiful. Yeah. I love that. The mind is so powerful. Um, there was a quote that you said, 80% uh, is in your mindset and then 20% is? In your action. In your action. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that you brought that one up. That's very profound, actually, because I recently went through something and I had to apply my own knowledge. Right. I was like, oh, boy, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my husband was like looking at me. He kept saying, do you know you're you're not practicing what you preach right now? Look at you. You're moaning because we move country. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I, all my stuff shifted and changed because everyone who was in person is now not every. It was chaos for me. Mm -hmm. And then managing the household stuff in the household, that all shifted. And I was, I felt so alone. And I was like, during the move, and he was like, you know, you're not practicing what you preach. He was like, all you keep saying is, I feel like I'm drowned, and mm. like you're getting angry and upset. Yeah, I'm human. We're all human. We are. We are all human. We all cry. We all feel. We all feel pain. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, most of us are, aren't robots. Yeah. And you know, and I, so I said, you're right. I'm really being a mess. So I sat, and I wrote out a hundred things. That I was grateful for and that I loved, not mm -hmm. just grateful, that I loved. So it's like, I am so grateful for my son. I love my life. I love the fact that I'm able to travel and live where I want. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that um, actually I do have an amazing team, even though they're not with me right now. And, mm -hmm. and I do have this and I do have that. Even when things weren't in my life, I will always give thanks. And I just wrote down this list and, and it literally shifted my mood. Mm -hmm. My sore throat, all the things I had, like a week ago went because I shifted, yeah. it's in the mindset, it and totally is. then I took the action. Yes, you yeah. Know? Well, that action, right, that's an amazing tip that you just gave, right? And for those that are listening, and you sometimes find yourself going into dark places in life, because it happens, right? Just recently, I, uh, I had a flood in our house, and we weren't prepared for it, and we had to move out, and oh my, my wife was in a car accident. It's like everything, like, it At just once. continued to strike, right? Yeah. And I showed up for a meeting one day with my team and my just my pot, my good positive energy just wasn't there. Right. Mm. And it was very noticeable. Like people were reaching out to me saying, hey, Jason, like, are you OK? Mm. Like, who was that on that call recently? You know, and I'm Isn't just like that funny. But it's because when you're such a bright light like you, mm -hmm. when we have these off days, mm -hmm. 
they're so noticeable more totally than anyone are. else. Yeah. Because our high is so big all the time, so yes. low. Uh-huh. Which, by the way, I'm normal right now. Yeah. And then this is a bit low. It yeah. feels horrendous. It does, right? yeah. Uh-huh. It becomes very <laughs> noticeable for those that, mm. that love you, right? And it's not like we're putting on a show right Mm -hmm. it's just that's how we show up for life right (laughs) yes but we're human (laughs) 100 percent. we're all human we all have things happen but by the way you don't grow from the good you grow from the challenges you grow from the hard times yes you grow when it's not all roses and fairies and pretty things Mm -hmm. we grow through the obstacles through the down times that's when our soul evolves. Mm. We are here to see how we're going to overcome those challenges, how we're going to move through those trials and tribulations in our life mm. to see who we are after it. It's not about who we were during yeah. that trial, mm-hmm. during COVID, during the long periods of doubt. It's who we are after. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So uh, a great tip you know go write down a hundred things that you're grateful for and if you if you don't have time just take a saturday just kind of do that but even if you don't have time to do that like find a gratitude partner like i have a gratitude partner where every morning we just text each other one thing that we're grateful for no just every morning that's pretty cool it's just a cool way to wake up your morning and just one little thing you text them they text you and that's it that's it have a good day Right. That should be my opening text on my phone, really, mm. rather than like, have you guys sent the images? <laughs> 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 or like, what time am I live? Like, oh my God, yeah, yeah, no, no I agree. <laughs> I try and keep, so I keep my phone airplane mode at night. Okay. And what I do is I listen to wave sounds. Okay. So they're downloaded already on my phone so I can have it by my bed, airplane mode, and I listen to the ocean. Sure. And it is so beautiful mm-hmm. all night. And then when I wake up, I refuse when possible. Yep. And I really mean when possible to put my phone off airplane mode until nine o'clock, mm. 10 o'clock. I decide when I'm going to start the day because if you go straight to your phone in the morning, straight to those emails, messages, notifications, you are subservient to somebody else's right. diary and agenda. Mm-hmm. That is you doing things for everybody else before yourself sure. and answering to them. You've got a first answer to you. Mm. What do I want to do today? What feels good for my soul? What feels good for my contribution to the world? What feels good for my purpose? How can I be in alignment with what I'm doing? How can I show up at a higher way today? Mm-hmm. And then you decide and plan your day from that place. Yeah, so, so walk me through that, right? So you mm-hmm. wake up in the morning and mm-hmm. what does what does your regimen look like? You know, so when I just put this on my Instagram this morning, I okay. literally just put my, my Mm -hmm. morning rituals on that okay Mm -hmm. so i wake up in the morning and i will meditate so i will put on a meditation um either music and guide myself or a guided meditation straight away at that point i relax i go into my meditation after it i will journal so i am usually having my tea at this point as well so i'm like drinking turmeric and ginger tea in the morning really great for you really great for immunity um and i feel like that's really calming and anti-inflammatory so i do that first of all so all about health why because my highest priorities in my life are number one god that's for me god Mm -hmm. number two health number three family number four contribution to the world and number five experiences Hmm. and actually john asraf really good friend of mine from the secret who endorsed my book um actually uh, taught me that so i I have to give him the credit for that one sure so he helped me get in alignment my my five things now Mm -hmm. i use those and i implement them into my morning and my day so now i've woken up i have done my meditation my giving thanks to the above to the universe that's what meditation is to me because Mm -hmm. when we pray we talk Mm. um but but when we meditate we listen interesting and we listen and we and we hear what we're meant to okay so after i do my meditation then i journal and i sit and i write out all the things i love or i plan my day in terms of what's going to happen and how i want it to go third person past tense got it third person mm-hmm. past tense Natasha mm-hmm. Day was absolutely incredible she met up with XYZ she had the most amazing podcast with Jason she had the one, most wonderful time he is an amazing human and together they help change the planet huh. things like that <laughs> and then <laughs> he's like whoa huge expectations I like you yes uh-huh. <laughs> so, so I do and then um, <clears throat> after that I go on and so I have my tea and then I get up and maybe I either eat breakfast at this point and then do yoga Mm -hmm. or I hang out with my son for a a bit here uh he's usually in my bed by this point like (laughs) 
I'm watching a movie <laughs> or something. Um, and then that's it. I then start my day after this series of things has happened. Mm. So I, I just take my highest priority seriously. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, very powerful. Um, I, I can definitely learn a few things from you, you know, because sometimes I just wake up and like you said, it's like just reach for the phone. What fire is happening right now? And it totally changes I your whole day. I still mm -hmm. am doing that from time to time. There's yeah. not there. I can't say I'm perfect. Nobody is. I will still be like on a weekend. It's a non-negotiable. I actually don't even turn it off airplane mode till maybe even 12 o'clock that's good like I, I it's a kind of I don't need to so I definitely do it on those days mm -hmm. and then maybe on like a Tuesday Wednesday Thursday but I'll still have days where it's like because I've got people in different countries you'll know this who yeah. are like working on different time zones right. and then they'll be like they need you on that and so they're only awake until nine o'clock your time a.m. Mm. so yeah I'm still I still have days where I can't get away from it but mm. I'll always try and come back to basics come back to me come back to wholeness because if you aren't overflowing with goodness and abundance if you aren't overflowing with self-love with feeling good yeah you have nothing to pour out onto others yeah you are overflowing with love now you can help others you're overflowing with health and wealth you can overpour into others you know sure 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 so uh so were you always like this or did you have like a breakthrough like, i get this question every I'm time anyone curious. meets me yeah. and now i i love it because uh -huh. i i like you know yes yeah. i was born three weeks early and i was clearly eager to get into the world okay and i believe when you are born has something to do with that sure i think people who are born prematurely early or whatever they they just have something big to do in this world mm -hmm. I, I, people who are late as well have also done amazing things so it's obviously this is not a sweeping statement i'm just i've noticed that some of the people that i work with have been born early and there is a few similarities there huh. you could use the same star signs sure. um and yeah i was born this way i have always had this amazing energy of course i i it my light dimmed my light dimmed when i went through some trying times in my life for a period of years yeah um but i always knew what i wanted to do and when i wasn't in alignment with my purpose i had this burning desire to be in alignment with my purpose hmm. which made me then change my life so let's get vulnerable for a second so uh so during your darkest point right how did you find um the soul from within to kind of break through that and well yeah. when i was in my darkest times which mm -hmm. is probably when i was ill and well okay i felt like i'd lost me i felt like i'd lost every part of me i felt like who am i like i've lost my sparkle yeah like i feel like i've lost who i was born to be and when you don't have your, your health you have nothing interesting you really have nothing and mm -hmm. I've been homeless. I was homeless in 2018 with my son. That was pretty bad. We had like, you know, and that was all around the time of the illness as well. So it was, I had some real drastic years, but the universe was just saying to me, red alarm bells, wake up and smell the coffee. You aren't listening. His yeah. pain, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, you're going to wake up, you're going to listen. Mm -hmm. I wasn't listening to them audibly. Mm. I wasn't listening to this little signs. So it got bigger and bigger and louder and louder until I listened. And my breakthrough started to happen when I read, because I'd always read books like The Secret. I'd always read Napoleon Hill, mm. Joseph Murphy, you know, some of the greats. I'd, I'd always been in touch with spirituality or the mm. greater good metaphysical. But when I was in a bad place, I just turned to some of those teachings and thought, you can take everything from me. But the one thing that you can't take from me is my mind. Hmm. The one thing you can't take. So surely I can come out of this. I can build back. It goes mm. back to what you first said. It's all in the mind. Mm. And I just knew I'm going to heal. I just knew I am going to come out of this stronger than ever. Yeah. And I am going to go on. I made this agreement with the universe. As I was listening to Denzel Washington's tape, and I said to the universe, I said to God, I said, if you show me how to heal right now, I promise to share with the world for the rest of my life mm. how you show me to heal. And why did? And I've never stopped since that day. Wow. 
And so what type of steps did you take then? So did you start to write your first book then? Or? That was, uh, yeah, the, bo okay. the book was a little bit after that. Okay. But I'd already started writing and, and doodling, like I call it doodling, just like endless notes yeah. and, and words, you know. Yeah. Um, but I basically just started taking steps towards feeling better, yeah. meditating, mm -hmm. breathing. I created my MBS method, which is inside the book which is meditational behavioral synchronicity, okay. which is all around ancient breathing techniques with modern day neuroscience, helping you to go deeper into altered states of awareness, helping you to access your higher mind faculties whilst meditating, mm. removing the self-limiting beliefs so that you're able to imprint a new belief system, wake up feeling different and saying, I'm not going to go by my old belief system that I don't feel good. I'm not going to go by my old belief system that I am not worthy of love. I am worthy of love. I'm worthy of healing. I'm worthy of being something greater than this right now. And as it says in the Denzel Washington speech, which you and I love, mm -hmm. we've been speaking about, yeah. Pain is just temporary. Whatever you're going through right now is just temporary. Yes. This is not permanent. This is not where you are destined to be. Yes. So just let it go. Yeah. Shake it off. Step out of it. So I told the pain, like, leave me. Just leave me. Just like, leave my body. You do not belong with me. You're not my pain. You're not my illness. You don't belong to me. Hmm. So I, that's why when people say, you know, what did you have? I, I, I no longer say, you know, my illness was or whatever i had an illness where i can i try and correct myself because it was very different you know mm -hmm. wow as you're saying that i wrote something down uh this is uh, from denzel it says don't settle for a life that is less than the one that you're capable of living mm. right and that's exactly what you said so even at your darkest moment right you knew in your mind that this isn't who you were this isn't what you were destined to become and so you just kind of take one little step forward one next little step forward. it happened to me too so back in uh, 2008 like my theory is to make your mess your message, right? <laughs> I, I use right. that so much. Yeah. I love it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Robin Roberts coined that one. Um, but um, but you know, so back in two thousand and eight, I was young. I was aggressive. I was hungry. I was reading the book Rich Dad Poor Dad. Uh, Great book, Robert Kiyosaki, right? And so I, uh, you know, I started to invest in real estate, right? And I'm like, yeah, this is so easy. You buy a house, you take <laughs> out some equity, you buy another house, you buy a house. You know, all of my other friends are living at home with their parents and they're basically like going to community college and I own like 12 homes, right? <laughs> it's like, I'm like, this is so easy, right? Mm -hmm. And then the whole market kind of collapsed. Um, and so like, I, I was like on the verge of bankruptcy, you know, I'm just like, what do I do? Like, how do I even get out of this? I had a wife and I had a, two boys at the time and it was just like came crashing down. But that's just it, you know, like you said, you can't take away my mind, right? I come from nothing, I can build it back up again. And I just took one little step forward and the next little step forward. And, and eventually, now here I am later, you know, I've got very success, successful business, I guess, however you define success. Got a studio and here I'm interviewing you, right? So like, if you are listening and you're in your dark, darkest point, like you can get out of it. Yeah, you ask can. for help. That's so. Mm -hmm. I love. I love hearing your story too. I mean, yeah. look, you can. You ask for help, and yeah. that's a great start. But also, just doing something different. If you've always done the same thing, you're always going to get what you always got. Mm -hmm. If you keep doing the same thing, you're never going to see a change in your life. You have to do something a little different to get a different result. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. We have a mutual friend, David Meltzer. Yeah, ain't he great? so good yeah the studio reminds me of one of his studios in uh, uh -huh. that we film at in vegas yeah. yeah yeah he's such a good dude and that's his so thing is like you know don't be afraid to ask for yeah. help absolutely right absolutely yeah y like just asking mm -hmm. asking you shall receive yeah yeah because people they get gratitude out of helping you right mm -hmm. like so why deprive somebody of that like of you know getting that self gratification by helping other people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so so meditation does that come easy to you you've got so much energy i, I can't see you just shutting it off <laughs> it's so funny because yeah. i have such a big voice yes. so when i meditate and uh -huh. i do meditations we go into this tone yeah we go into another tone but no mm -hmm. um i used to find it hard because i was like oh, all the time just like super go 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 yeah so i created my mbs and my mbs method starts with breathing exercises so you can either do Wim Hof or you can do another uh, pranayama type of breathing mm -hmm. and when you do that you go deeper you calm down you go calmer first okay. then you meditate huh. 
you don't try and meditate right now when you're like super hyped. You meditate when you're like, okay, I need a breather. I feel stressed. Start with breathing. Just yeah. like, should I show you an exercise? I would love that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so for anyone that's doing this at home, don't do this while you're driving. <laughs> um, and just, okay, we'll do a little round of breathing. Okay. So I always do this when I go on stage. As soon as I walk out on stage, I'm like, okay, everybody stand up. I'm like, we're going to breathe. Okay. okay, so let's do a round of um, Wim Hof. So we'll okay. go. We're going to go breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth for five. Then we're going to hold it for as long as we can at the bottom. I'll guide you. Okay. And then we're going to inhale for 15. Okay. okay you ready? So yes. we're going to go. <laughs> holding it out for as long as you can at the bottom right now. Just holding it out. Holding it out and just holding that breath for as long as you can. Usually you could go for about a minute at this point. We're just going to calm the mind. We're just going to allow the body to rest, come into this present moment. Calm your thoughts. And whenever you need, just take a breath and inhale. And whenever you want, just coming back and just inhaling and holding the breath at the top 15 seconds. And just relaxing into this moment, allowing your breath and you to become one. Allowing your breath to be your guiding force. So just inhaling in a few seconds. We'll inhale all together. Now, hold it at the top for 15 seconds right here. Good. And then releasing it. And when you do that, you can do that about five times in a row. You do that every single morning. You mm. do that every day as you start your day. That's often how I'll start my meditation practice. And I try and do that every single day huh. before a meeting or before an event. And I do that because it sets my tone. It calms me down. It brings me into the only moment we have, yeah. which is the present moment right now. I feel so much lighter. Like I you bet. just kind of get... Right? It's like therapy, right? Mm. Like sometimes people don't go to therapy and they keep everything within. Mm -hmm. Kind of like constantly breathing in, but you're not exhaling, right? And that's um, just one round. So imagine when you do that five times, yeah. you just do, or three lots of five. It takes around 10 minutes, depending on how long your breath holds are for. And you just come into the present moment and just feel amazing. You're like, I can just be at one again. I can just be peaceful. And then that's when you try and meditate. Mm. You know, and your hands tingle, your body tingles. That's normal. That's the oxygen going to all the new cells. That's yeah. the rejuvenation happening in your body. Breathing can either heal you or can kill you. That's the powerful. breath mm -hmm. is the first thing we do when we come into this world. We take our first breath. We receive our first breath. Yeah. And as we leave, we exhale. <sighs> and that's the last thing we do so powerful thank you so much for doing that exercise and if you're experimenting at home with breathing exercises i'm sure you can probably learn a lot from mm -hmm. her book on these different methods um you can't get it wrong right yeah. i mean if you just practice and you find your own way but if there's mm -hmm. techniques that'll help mm -hmm. you i certainly need it because mm -hmm. i have a hard time kind of just stopping and just kind of breathing yeah, yeah no, I, the mind. I know what you mean, yeah. and that's it. You just breath work really helps. Mm -hmm. For someone like that who's really on the go, go and do it at lunchtime. Sure. Go and break up your day so that you've got more energy. If I could tell you, I can show you how to have more energy this afternoon. Yeah. I can show you how to show up in your meetings better, how to have an amazing afternoon. Mm -hmm. You'd say, tell me your secret. That's right. Go to the bathroom, go and do a breathing exercise. Wherever yeah. you are at work, just sit down, park the car, take a moment away from the kids, just go sit in a bathroom a lot of the time or go and sit outside in nature even better put your feet on the ground in the earth yeah like this will sound crazy but my feet are always covered in soil mm -hmm. i know that sounds nuts like <laughs> it's so annoying my shoes now they're all right today but like my shoes are always covered in soil because i'm always walking by foot i mean you literally best believe if i'm walking 10 minutes between somewhere, oh, you're going to watch me go in my full-blown outfit, uh -huh. take my heels off, and walk on the grass. 
hundred percent. I want to feel the grass because that's mother nature. That's grounding. That's rooting. Mm -hmm. and, and in my MBS, we often do things where you visualize your feet growing roots through mother earth and absorbing the amazing energy through your body. Yeah. It's just a, an idea. It's just, even if it's not true, Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether it's true or not. It's whether you believe it mm. or not. So try something different. I love it. So be it until you become it, right? I'm talking about your book here. Hold mm -hmm. it up so that people can see it. When did you write this book? So this book I wrote um, took me... This took me a few years. Okay. This took me a while. I've yeah. been writing this for years. Um, and yeah, it's a really big part of my life. I wrote this book as my gift to the world. Mm. It's the law of attraction explained through ancient wisdom and neuroscience. Okay. It's that point where they meet and it's called be it until you become it. Because I did never like fake it until you make it. Like fake it until you make it. I just thought, fuck that. It's just not for me. Like yeah. I am not that kind of girl. Uh -huh. I want to be it. I want to become it. Yes. I kept saying in the audience, be it, become it. I was like, that's the name of my book. Yeah. Be it, it until you to become you. <laughs> it. Can't you? Because I just knew like when I was healing, I had to step into a healed version of me and be the healed version. Like today I am healed. Yeah. I am deciding to be healed. I am going to act as though I'm healed or I can give into the pain and be subservient to all the stuff that comes with that pain, but I'm not going to do it. I, I want to be free today. I want to be amazing today. I want to show up so that I can be a role model for my son mm. and for others in the world. I'm going to be a role model for more children in the world, for more people in the world. I want to go on and serve the world. I have a big mission, a big purpose, and I wake up every day thinking, who can I heal today? Mm. Who else can I show how to end suffering? Who else can I show how to make a better impression in their life, to do something greater than what they're doing right now? Mm. Don't you just love when somebody reads your book and they tell you how their life was changed as a result of reading the yes, book? Yes, yes. I mean, when somebody comes to me and they say, I mean, literally, your book is, I mean, look, for example, one of the testimonials from uh -huh. Gigi Gorgeous, uh -huh. um, you know, she says this book has, has totally uh, transformed so much for me. It's been, a, it's been so amazing for my life you are a gift to the world like the way that you know people read it and they understand that you want to help them the same way you helped yourself so now granted right i've got a list of you know 100 books that i want to read right and it's like priority this one <laughs> this one right you know there's so many Me right too. so who's that person that um should take your book and move it right to the top right, mm. right now. I'm just curious. Like, Ooh, what's I going on in their life? Um, yes. Can I just, like, squeeze this Please ball? Please do. Oh, yeah. it's so cool. I've been watching this ball the whole time. <laughs> make it happen. Look at that. It says, make it happen, you guys. Okay. Um, and I, I'm sure you have a game coming up for me, so I feel like there's a lot going on there. So, like, I, you, is there a game coming up? There's just, no. There's oh, my God. We should start playing a game. Like, totally choose a gift, game. and what does it mean on your mind? Can we do that? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, Because yes. okay. I'll okay. tell you the answer to this. And then we're like, uh -huh. Okay, so wait. What was the question? So the question is. Oh, who should move it up? Who should move it up there you go yes. okay who should move it up mm -hmm. the person who should move it up mm -hmm. is the person who really believes that they can do more in their life than what they are doing now the person who is committed and is going to take action this is not for anyone by the way mm -hmm. don't even buy the book if you are not actually going to take action mm -hmm. don't even bother there's no point honey go go just carry on your life you want mediocrity mm -hmm. no problem this book is for people that want more than that it's for people who want to put some figures in their bank account. They want to put some numbers in there. Maybe they want to conceive a child. Maybe they want to do better in business. Maybe they want to build an amazing team. Mm. Maybe they just want to heal. Maybe they, they want to see some breakthroughs in their life. This book is for those people who are just going to show up and step into it and go on and be an inspiration for somebody else. Wow. See, you heard it here. <laughs> you heard it here. Make it happen. <laughs> So there's a saying that says, and I, I also live my life by this saying, and the saying goes, you have a power, you have the power to live a life that wasn't going to happen anyway. All you have to do is go take action, right? Mm. Go talk to the pretty girl that you're too intimidated to talk to, right? You, you have to go take action because sometimes you just kind of just talk yourself out of doing things. Like mm -hmm. leave the job that you know, makes you miserable every day. Is that the life you want to live? Wow. Yep. Right? You literally have the power. And I try to institute, I've got two older boys too as well. Mm -hmm. We've got a 19-year-old and a 7 year old mm -hmm. 
And, um, you know, I try to say, live a life, right, that you're capable of living. And it, your life wasn't going to happen anyway if you don't take action. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So, take yeah. action. Mm-hmm. Action, like I said, is the 20%. So mm-hmm. 80% is literally in your mind. Mm-hmm. If you can feel it in your mind, see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand, you can feel it in reality. Yeah. You can bring the ideas here to here in this physical space because... Okay, this ball, this water bottle, the light, it all began as a mere thought Mm -hmm. in someone's mind once upon a time. Yeah. She's dangerous. Like, she really is. (laughs) She's got it all. I think I'm an old soul in in a young body, you know? I just, I've been here a few times. I know it. And I'm like trying to catch up with where I was up to. It's Uh like, I can't get there any faster. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's so funny. See, I've got uh, my two boys, right? So one of them is, like, super confident, right? Like, you know, can change the world. He just wow. kind of gets into things. He just starts writing songs. Now he's, like, producing, right? And then I got my other son who, who's, like, got these, like, GQ Brad Pitt looks, right? But he doesn't have the confidence, right? So, like, how do you how do you help somebody with kind of teaching them more confidence mm, right that, that's that is such a great question it's yeah. in the book in we the have book. a whole thing about confidence okay confidence comes from within not from without yes confidence comes from who you believe you are going back to that thing i said a minute ago remember when i told you it doesn't matter if it's the truth or not it's whether you believe it Mm -hmm. become the version of you in your thoughts your feelings and your actions and confidence will flow to you because you are changing who you are Mm. at a root level you're deciding i am confident because that's something that i think as the version of me i want to be i feel great every day so you have to just direct people and then they have to take it themselves but you direct them to those thoughts feelings actions get them to draw it out Mm -hmm. you know one of the things we do in the book is we go through how to draw that process out your thoughts your feelings and your actions yeah what does that version of you think like now you're confident yeah you know how do they walk they show up in the room with their shoulders back or mm-hmm. hunched over. Yeah. They show up confident. They That's walk right. with their shoulders relaxed and down. That's their right. heads up a bit higher. Posture is a great way to teach people confidence. Ooh, okay. I bet you've never been told that. No. Posture is a great way. Posture is think about it. If you sit up tall, you feel confident. If I like slouch down here, I feel more nervous. Yeah. I feel like calmer maybe, but like maybe closed body language when I open up my body language Mm -hmm. all of a sudden i'm confident Hmm. my palms are open body language is everything so posture walk a bit taller feel a bit taller that's right and there is a difference between arrogance and confidence Mm -hmm. right yeah and so be confident just don't be arrogant (laughs) right that's Mm -hmm. the truth Mm -hmm. right arrogance is like a lack of gratitude arrogance is a a knowing but the wrong type of knowing Mm -hmm. so i i like i'm very confident but i'm not arrogant if i was arrogant i'd be like yeah of course i'm like that like exactly whatever like i don't care about your opinion i don't care about your that's arrogance Mm -hmm. confidence is thank you so much i appreciate your words i appreciate everything that i have my Mm -hmm. gifts and why i'm here you know, that's the other thing, too, is, like, sometimes you talk to people and they're not listening to you. They're just waiting to talk, right? You know, there's, there's anyway. And so, not being a good listener. Very yeah. Very true. That's so true. I got told the other day by an actress, she was on my show, and she said, you should have been in CSI with these big shows. She said, Natasha, can I just say something? I know I'm um, interviewing you right now, but you're an amazing listener. Mm. And I was like, thank you so much. It was the first time that I'd heard that in a long time. And I was like, that's really nice to know because... And I was like, why? And she was like, because I can tell by your facial expressions. Mm. Like, you just listen. Yeah. And like, you know, it's really good to see a lot of people exactly. Totally. Like, I didn't realize that. People mm-hmm. just want to talk. But when you listen, you learn. When you talk, you don't learn. And it's so obvious, right? When you're talking, you're having a conversation with somebody and they're not really truly present. And it's like frustrating. You keep having the conversation, right? And then they're just kind of waiting to talk, right? You know. Um, so if you find yourself doing that, just kind of get in tune with yourself. Like, be, try to become a better listener, right? Yeah. So there's five pillars of philosophy. Um, I want to talk about that. Um, what are the five pillars, and how did you come up with it? 
<coughs> the five pillars to achieving your goals. Okay. Number one, get mm -hmm. clarity of your vision. Okay. Number two, remove the limiting beliefs. Number three, replace the old limiting beliefs with an, a new belief about yourself, a new empowered belief. Number four, expand your vision. Okay. So that could be through visualization or vision boards. And number five, take inspired action. Take inspired action. Mm -hmm. hmm. So five pillars which make you feel good. You can apply this to anything. You can apply this to business. You can apply this to your family. You can apply this to any goal that you have. If you mm -hmm. don't have pillar one, getting clarity on your vision, you don't even have a goal. Sure. Get clarity on what you want. When I ask people, what do you want? Do you know how often they say things like, oh, I don't know. Maybe a bit more of this. Or like Maybe a bit more of that. It's like, no. sweetie, get clarity. Know exactly what it is that you want. Mm -hmm. Do you want to fly? Do you want to touch the sky? What do you want? Yeah. You know? Uh -huh. And then it's like, I think that's a song, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, I believe I can fly. <laughs> well, that's a controversial song right now, right? Is it? With R. Kelly. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. That was bad timing. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, <laughs> it's a great song, right? We that's whose that. song it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, that's so controversial <laughs> right now. Boy, <laughs> I stay off those topics. I leave it for other people. But, <laughs> <laughs> so um okay yes um do you feel confident okay mm -hmm. now back to it the, fi the, these, five, pillars. the five pillars yep. can be achieved very quickly and you can do them through literally applying every single one of those pillars in the book we go into detail on how to do it but pillar two is very important removing the limiting beliefs because when you want to achieve a goal when you want to manifest the love of your life when you want to to manifest a billion dollars or 100 million or 10 million, whichever it is that you're going for. Mm -hmm. If you do not first remove the blockages inside of you that are stopping you from achieving those goals, mm -hmm. the things that are inside of you, which are like, oh, I don't believe I'm worthy of the money coming in. I don't believe I'm worthy of this thing. You know what? You're not going to attract it. You're not going to achieve it because these blockages are stopping you. That's right. It so doesn't matter how much we give them. Mm -hmm. They're never going to get past that blockage. So you've got to do that. And you can do that through meditation. You can do that through my MBS method. That's the quickest way to do it because the MBS method is three years of therapy in 15 minutes. That's its nickname. Okay. Um, but you can also do it through like NLP. It doesn't have to be my method. You can do it. Just make sure you get rid of those limiting beliefs. That's you know, right. mm -hmm. I just personally don't like to sit down in therapy for three years and get a result after it. I like it today. Like I've got no time for that. I need today. Show me how to remove it right now. Mm. That's what I teach. You know? Yeah. No. And that's in this book mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, I'm so excited to read this book. I'm actually excited. Like you're you're getting one of the VIP copies. Oh. Um, yeah, we'll get your address after it so we can like S ship you the, you're having the special VIP box because you're here right now. Uh -huh. I won't tell you, but if you blocked your ears, I would tell it. <laughs> <laughs> so my VIP members, they get a special box and it's mm. not like a kind of like a, it's not a box that like has goodies in. Yeah. It's designed for that person. But anyway, sure. it's like, a, it's really cool. That's and so I'm only cool. doing 50 to my top celebrity and A-list and I am so friends. honored. Of Thank course. you. I can't wait to get it. And you. and you are in the process of writing another book. Yes, is that right? I'm okay. I'm already on, this one is out August 2nd. Uh -huh. So now, and yeah, my next one is, um, about love, I'll just say that much. Okay. The whole book is on love, and then the next one after that will be solely on business and solely on. So each year there'll be an addition to it. Hmm. Um, I just want to leave a legacy. It's not about my name. It's about the legacy that I leave here on planet Earth. It's about my work leaving a mark, hmm. my imprint. You know, I was watching a, a movie with my son. It's called Good Dinosaur. Okay, and. Um, they have the mark that they leave. All these dinosaurs, I don't know if you've seen it with your, your little one, mm -hmm. with Brooklyn, but the dinosaur puts its paw, you should definitely watch it, Kay. onto the rock. And as it imprints onto the rock, it leaves a mark. And there's this whole tower of the marks that each dinosaur leaves. What is your mark that you want to leave? What is, and I asked this to someone listening today, what is the mark that you want to leave today in mm -hmm. the world? What's the imprint you want to leave there mm. after you're gone? Sure. That is serving the world. Yeah. That is following your assignment that you're here to do, following your true purpose, leaving an imprint here on planet Earth there after you're gone. Wow. So, so uh, I'll share a story as well. Mm. Um, so I wrote my first book, but it's more about like what I do SEO, right? Um, but 
when I was um, at my grandfather's funeral, he passed away during COVID, right? And so uh, went back home, you know, went to the services. You go to the service and, you know, there's, there's all your friends and family, everybody that loved him show up, right? Um, there's photos on the wall of all the different memories, right? There's a video playing in the background of like, you know, all the different clips of like him and his life. Um, people get up, they say nice things about him, right? Um, at the end of it, he's in the casket, right? And so I, I thought of this word glimpse was the word that came to me, right? And so mm. that is going to be a book that I write called Glimpse because you're in full control of everything that is in that room. You're in full control of all the people that are getting up to share stories. You're in full control of all the photos that are going to get taken. You're in con full control of all the videos that are going to appear there, right? And so, like, I just want the, the world to see that, you know, that, that you have a glimpse into what the, what, your, what the end could look like, right? And you're in full control of it. So powerful. Right? Yeah. So, so beautiful. Maybe it could be a, like a Nicholas Sparks movie, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I was just like, ah, that's so good. Yeah. Wow. Powerful yeah. idea. You should get and do that. You're just sitting there, right? It's like, this is what the end looks like. It doesn't matter how much money you had, no. right? You're not taking that with you. Like, that's just a tool. You literally leave yeah, the same way you came in. You leave the same way you came in. You lose your last breath. And it's all a matter of the stories and the memories that you've created wow. you know, in your time frame. Yeah. Wow. So, anyway, so you hold me accountable to writing that book someday. I will. And there I'll hold go. you accountable to all your books. Oh, yes, please See? do. <laughs> yeah, you need accountability <laughs> partners. You need friends. You I'm do. obsessed with these games on the table. I don't know. Is like, it, Can people watch this as a video? Yes. Uh -huh. Who's watching, mate? You're just seeing the toys that I'm playing <laughs> with. Oh, my God, I'm having so much fun. They're just so cool. I feel like... I, if, if this was like my box and like I may even come record my, my podcast because it's so epic mm -hmm. um, but basically like when I'm looking at them I like want to pick one up and I basically want to just like tell a story about what it means to me there and then in that moment because I often like say to people if I say the word dream what do you think and they're like house and I'm like home and they're like Miami and like do do mm -hmm. do, do. They, yeah. yeah like uh -huh. word association yeah. I feel like these games have that like um that vibe. We'll pick up a ball and throw me one, and okay. let's talk about it here. All right. This is so fun. All right. Okay. I'll go first. Okay, go. Won't stop, can't stop. So the first thing that comes to mind is Miley Cyrus. <laughs> like, oh, that's so <laughs> cool! Yeah, the song is so good. Oh really? my god, I love that. I that's love that. That's the first thing that comes to mind. So I'm so playful, aren't I? I feel like I'm uh -huh. the most playful person. Right. That's so cool. You're really playful too. Yeah. Um. Okay. I got proved them wrong. So that's really interesting because I feel like in my life I've been um like pigeonholed so many times. People look at me if they, if, they, if you saw me in the street like this or you, or you mm. see me not on my Instagram because it's literally a motivational page. You know, it's yeah. all about inspiration. But if you saw me, you would maybe misjudge me. And then as soon as I open my mouth, it's like whoa. Mm. Like, where did that big voice come from? This See? tiny little five foot four person. Uh -huh. Yeah. So See? Interesting. Cool. I Give me love. one more. Let's yeah. do it again. This is so <clears throat> right now. Here we go. Orange. Ooh, I love orange. Find your fire. Okay. So the first thing that comes to mind is, um, you know, just having drive in life, mm -hmm. right? Waking mm -hmm. up and thinking that you can change the world mm -hmm. and actually like taking action to do that. So find your fire in its orange ball. Wow, so, yes. that's so cool. That's yes. so cool. What's your say? Okay, 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 dream big. Ooh. So. That's the Denzel Washington, yeah. it's called dream big. Isn't it called dream big? It is. Something like dream, yeah, you're right. Huh. That's nuts. Okay, well, that, that's it. Go and listen <laughs> to Denzel Washington. <laughs> if you don't take anything else away today, even if you don't order my book, yes. just at least listen to the Denzel Washington tape. There you go. Like, that's for you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. See, look, you brought our toys to life here. I love He's this. Created. I love this. I was mm -hmm. like, there must be a game he's going to make me play. Okay, so it's so funny. We have pens like... Uh -huh. this in the shower of my bathrooms in Kay. my house they're ba they're special bathroom markers uh -huh. however they do stain in between the tilings Ooh. and so my son spends half his time in the shower drawing because i've given him permission to uh -huh. but i love him to be creative and i get pens 
and I literally write my dreams on windows, showers, it's, everywhere. It's so cool. Because I believe that's how they come to life. Me like just too. being childlike and fun and just drawing things and like Yeah, that's so smart. Like I want pens for my shower <gasps> now. I could have bought you some I have like See? spare boxes. Uh -huh. No, I legit have <laughs> spare boxes. Oh my God. <clears throat> so I, I wrote an entrepreneur article. Um it's on entrepreneur.com about um taking an eight hour shower um Whoa. once a week right so it's a whole thing you know because some of your greatest ideas come from taking in a shower and why do you limit yourself to just like a four minute shower right so it's not really taking an eight hour shower but um you know just finding like one day mm -hmm. where you can just be creative like just blocking off eight hours just to be creative where you got no other distractions and so that's my definition of like an eight hour shower obsessed Yes. I love mm -hmm. that. I, I couldn't agree more. So I I love that. I go in the shower for eight hours. Because that's where your creativity yeah. comes in. I, I right? legit have showers, which I my longest was like an hour and 45 minutes. My husband mm -hmm. was like, where were you? I was like, in the shower <laughs> for like 10 minutes. He was like, you were in there for an hour. I'm changing the world in my mind, <laughs> right? In the shower. I am. I just draw on windows in the shower. Like I, uh -huh. I, I find that so so incredible and so fun and i feel like mm -hmm. it's my freedom it's where i dream you're right mm -hmm. ideas do come in the shower yes right so so you in the earlier in the show you talked about you know how you kind of manifested the love of your life got married but you said i used some of my techniques and i'm sure i'm sure we talked about some of them but like for those that are looking for the love of their life listening right now what are some of the techniques that they can use okay mm -hmm. are you ready write this down number one okay we're going to use the five pillars so you get clarity on your vision okay, okay. so that means you need to write a list of a hundred things you want in your partner 10 things they look like 10 things they feel like okay. 10 things you do together 10 attributes, characteristics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you go through that list and you don't just put it under your pillow and just walk away and go, great, he'll just sort, they'll just show up in mm -hmm. my life. What you do is you mark yourself out of 10. So how generous am I mm -hmm. out of 10? How loving am I out of 10? How kind am I out of 10? Anything you are below an eight on, honey, you got to work on. Mm -hmm. So now you go and work on this and you're like, that was nuts. My chair just went down. <laughs> and then, <laughs> woo, and now you're working on it and you are focused on it. And so you are becoming the most loving, generous, amazing version of you that you could possibly be. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You are going to attract that to you because you're no longer resonating in a lower frequency, not being generous, not being loving, not being funny, not being exciting. When you expect all of that from somebody else, actually, you are becoming your dream partner. So now they are magnetized to you. Mm -hmm. You're a magnet to what you receive. So you want to receive your dream partner. You're a classic line. Oh, I just keep going for douchebags. Or like every person I go for is, is so crap. You're or attracting that. Yes. You're attracting that. Mm -hmm. It's not their fault. You're allowing that into your life. Yes. You've got to shift your dynamic. Shift your frequency and say, I'm really loving. I'm really successful. I'm really amazing. I'm going to be all these things. And then boom, that person is drawn to you. That is the most amazing technique I've ever heard. <laughs> if you are single looking for the love of your life, go do that. That's that, a whole book. Like you should write that book. That's, that's it. It's a hundred things. I mean, look. Oh my God. That's only tip one. Mm, that's only tip one. Okay. Please. She's like, tell me the other things. Please I'm like, Jenna's like, tell me. You. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. by the way, you, this is not just for people who want new love. You can do this to strengthen your own marriage. You can do this to strengthen your own current relationship. Ooh, I didn't think about it like that. Because you just decide, mm -hmm. I really want these traits in my partner, so let me be these traits, and then they'll show up as these traits. Mm. It's about being loving. It's about becoming that person. And then when I'm nice to my husband, he's nice to me. Mm -hmm. But when I'm a bitch to him, and I've oh, been guilty of doing that recently, <laughs> so bad, I feel so bad. <laughs> Then I will go and I'll write a love letter to him. And be like, I'm so sorry that I was so moody on my period. Like, <laughs> I'm going to be a lot nicer now. Um, and so, okay, here's what you do. Tip two. Okay. Tip two. And look, I'm just writing exactly what I've done. And I've helped people manifest their partners into their life within. The closest one was 24 hours. Mm. Mine was three weeks. And the longest is about three months. So they are 
between 24 hours to three months as it stands. Okay. And I like that. I'd love a same day. That would be pretty awesome. <laughs> um, but here we go. And please write to me and let me know if this does happen for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, here's how you do it. Number two, you get something that you love the smell of. Now, I personally use tea. Okay, so I get a box of tea with 30 tea bags in. And I'll open the tea bag. And I did this. Okay, and I open this box. I wish I was endorsed by this brand because I would so mention it because of the name of it. It's so good, but I'm not, so I'm not going to be selling it. Okay. And here's how it goes. I open this box and I inhale this tea. Mm -hmm. You can do it with any tea that you love, anything you love the smell of. And as I inhale the smell of the tea, I would visualize what it felt like to be held by my soulmate, mm -hmm. held by them married what does it feel like to be married to this person i would literally smell the tea bag and visualize for 17 seconds key number here mm -hmm. how it felt to be married and guess what 30 tea bags in i met my husband he mm -hmm. walked into my life i can do this time and time and time again for anybody Ooh so the smell the smell because you're mm -hmm. activating parts in your brain it's neuroscience you're activating parts of your brain Triggers. which are stimulated mm -hmm. the reticular activating system wakes up the amygdala wakes up different parts of your brain wake up which suggest that you're going to bring it to fruition faster because you're attaching your senses to it when you attach your smell sense to it your visual sense to it your hearing audible sense to it you are more likely to have an all-encompassing feeling storing as a memory in your brain your hippocampus and all of a sudden you're going to bring it to fruition that's on a whole nother level crazy oh my god like if, <laughs> you need to if you're listening to this rewind that and listen again like yes i could drop neuroscience all day that's why the books do you know actually there's a lot of studies in the book about neuroscience hmm. because I, I geek out over it like yeah. i love this stuff i'm such a geek i love neuroscience i'm passionate about it so neuroscience explain to those yes that are that are listening that don't understand that yes okay mm -hmm. neuroscience is, is like the latest about the brain the yeah. latest discoveries about the brain and mm -hmm. how it can benefit your life or not benefit your life we're mm -hmm. in control of our brain and guess what neuroplasticity is happening until the day we die mm. not just till we're 25 we thought it was you know only till you're an adult no yeah. it's happening until the day you die which means that you can learn a new skill learn a new language at any point in your life because neuroplasticity is happening every day which mm. means that we can achieve any goal that we want through learning a new skill. We can go and train to be a firefighter. We can go and train to be an, an entrepreneur. We can go and train in business. We can go and train to be the perfect partner. Mm -hmm. We can legit teach ourselves to be it until you become it. Yes. So you become the version of you through neuroscience. So do you want me to give you some? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Please so do. there's a part in our brain called the reticular activating system. Okay the RAS, and it filters 2 million bits of data every second, colors and sounds and things that you see, not smell. Mm -hmm. And it shows you things that you deem as important. So what do you deem as important? Anything that you focus your mind on is what your RAS deems as important. Sure. So if you're focusing your mind on, I, I feel unworthy of, of this, I, I feel unwell, I feel down, I feel not good enough to attract the love of my life, I, I don't feel great, I, 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 I just, all these negatives, mm. then your reticular activating system is going to show you evidence around you in people, events, and places to prove mm. that your belief system of unworthiness is real. If you then recognize that you are in control. So, okay, wait, no, I don't deem that as important. I deem as important. I am worthy of love. Even if I don't believe it, even if it's not true, I believe it. Mm. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe it. I'm worthy of love. I'm worthy of meeting the love of my life in the next month. I am truly believing it. And then guess what? You change your thought system. Mm -hmm. You change your reality. You change your inner reality, your outer reality changes. And so your reticular activating system now shows you evidence around you in people, events, and places to prove your new belief system is real. My mind is playing tricks on me. Oh, it's so powerful. Oh, my God. Thank you. So many sound bites there to share. Uh, I cannot wait for my listeners to get inspiration from this and to get inspiration from your whole book. We're going to move to something that we like to call Hennessy Heart to Heart. Okay. Ooh. Super simple. Uh, I'm just going to ask you questions, and the first thing that comes to your mind, similar to what we did with the balls here, right? Here it is. What do you think the world needs more of? Love. Love. Okay, got it. I agree. 
We already talked about the first thing you do when you wake up, so I'm going to skip that one. Name one thing that surprised you about being a parent. How hot it was. Mm. How triggering it was. Like, how all-encompassing it was Mm. to just, like, suddenly be responsible for this other person. Mm. And, like, you're no longer just it's good because it, it makes you realize you're not just about your business like there's a bigger purpose here mm. you like got to be a role model for your kid too yeah so many lessons by having kids <sighs> what's the best gift you have ever been given hmm. um you can define that you're any way you want to health define health yeah a million times over health just like anybody who's my love language is acts of service so when somebody so when somebody tells me or does something for me sorry they they anything like i often i often hire people in my team because of how much they do before they work for me hmm. and how much and words of affirmation is my next one that's how my much they that's has. Fine, yeah. so, mm-hmm. cool. <laughs> so i often like will take somebody on and i just have adoration for them because they do so much for me yeah. you know like that just means the world to me so health if somebody shows me how to better my health i'm like thank you yeah you know and then by the way that's a book called the five love languages yes, for those that so are listening good. such a if you're in any type of a relationship you and your partner should definitely read it i think i know the answer to this one um but i'll say it anyway coffee or tea tea <laughs> how many pairs of shoes how many pairs of shoes do you own mm. <sighs> So I have two closets, like my main closet, 150, but then like my today, my, okay, so for example, every time I'm going out the door, I have like a closet, my like walk-in, which is like right next to the bedroom, which is like my stuff, which is already prepared in outfits. And Uh I probably only have like 20 pairs there. Okay. So like they're the ones I wear. (laughs) So it's not bad. (laughs) I could take that down to about, you know, five. Like, I have no problem. I'm actually really unattached to material things. Like I'm... I'll wear this same pair like I've worn on stage for every s- keynote I've ever done. Mm. Like I just, I'm just like that girl. I was wearing trainers actually until my husband went, look, babe, they were white platform trainers and everyone was talking about when you were on stage like, how dirty they were because you're <laughs> in soil all the time. Like you've got to take them off and wear some heels on stage. Like, are you serious? I was like, why can't I wear trainers on stage? <laughs> <laughs> so he bought me a pair of like sparkly heels and I was like forced to wear them. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows you best? Hmm. (sighs) My mom or my husband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Other than your husband, who do you call when you have great news? My mom. Mom. Um, And then uh, my vice president at my company, Maria. She's amazing. I just like, she's like my best friend as well. Hmm. It's like, I'm just like, boom. I just call her and I'll tell her or... Um, okay, actually, really interesting. When I have great news, mm. that has come to fruition. And it's not like good news that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. When it's good news, like, your magazine article's out. Like, I mean, I'm the cover of Glamour right right now. So it's... Um, wow, congrats. It's, uh, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. So it went, like, it's like, I wouldn't tell people until that was physically out. Yes. So then I will send it to my 10 or 20 top influential friends Mm. that's who i tell good news to because then they might go and promote it and then i'll do the same for them there you go yep love it that was a good piece of advice for someone who's like what do i do yes go tell people who are gonna spread it for you Uh uh-huh what's your go-to karaoke song oh my god um a hundred percent mariah carey just like any one of Ooh. Mariah Carey's, yeah, yes. yeah, Mariah Carey. Oh, okay, okay, wait, wait. One that I always go to, Jolene, Jolene, Ooh, Jolene. Yeah, golly, amazing. okay. Yeah, I love that. I am obsessed with that song. I don't know why. My, Miley like, covers that one pretty mm-hmm. well too. She does. Yeah, she's really good. Where do you consider home to be? L.A. L.A. What does a relaxing evening look like for you? Oh my gosh. If it's cold by the fire with rain in the background. If it's hot, then like meditating by the pool with like a little stick fire. Like just like reading a book. Just like with my son watching a movie. Like no phones. Get all devices away from me. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. You practice what you preach. Oh, yeah. 
Yes, like the whole clarity in her, what everything you talk about. There's so much <laughs> specificity to it. Uh, is there a celebrity you often get mistaken for? Oh, God, yeah. But I, I and I, she's freaking amazing, but like I just, I'm complimented. Kim Kardashian mm. all the time. Um, I've, I have a lot of taxi drivers be like, you know, you Kim K or like, are you related to the Are you one of the Kardashians or you Kim? Yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> compliment i'm like that's great I, Take it. I think that's a big <laughs> compliment for sure um you speak multiple languages is that right wow you've done your research yes i'm very impressed yeah, yeah I, I, need to, I need to make sure i step up my game on researching people <laughs> this is like you're amazing okay i speak spanish i speak french i speak arabic not much arabic let me know i'm not fluent in it mm -hmm. and i speak greek i understand a bit of hebrew um and italian in Italian. Yeah. Impressive. What's your favorite language to speak? Italiano. Yeah. Huh? Well, Arabic, actually. I love Arabic. I find it really just like, oh, it's just so sexy. It's just like a really hot language. I love the words when they sing in Arabic. I'm like, wow, I don't know what the hell that part means, but you know. <laughs> 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 yeah like mm. i often you'll see on my instagram i often be like dancing to greek music i love that mm, yes mm. um if you could have dinner with anyone living or dead who would it be denzel washington yeah huh i'll pull up a chair for that dinner <laughs> i know i i should make that happen why have i not made that happen yeah let's make that happen let's actually make that happen uh-huh I'm so down. Okay. Let's actually legit make that. We can make that happen. I have we a will make, we that, make that, happen. that happen. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so D Denzel. Okay. And then let's use somebody that I would have loved. Michael Jackson. Hmm. <sighs> Honestly, I would have done anything to have met him. Yeah. And I, I just, yeah, that would have been a very exciting, just he changed the world. He did. Like, I would love to like know. When he died, I remember asking him to, channel a lot of his positive energy through me i actually remember that moment being mm. like you know i know when bob proctor died i also said channel whatever words you want through me and the weirdest things happened two people came up to me within that first week saying you remind me so much of bob proctor's work wow. and i can't and now he's gone i'm coming into your program because i it was it was actually mind-blowing i was like wow this stuff is really channel real channel it through me wow that's deep <clears throat> What books are you reading right now? Mm, Dale Carnegie, How to Worry Less and Live More. Mm. Um, yeah, and my own book, Be It Till You Become It. Because mm. there's just like so much in there that is like, like studies, you know, that I want to like be really familiar with. Who inspires you? Oprah, mm. Michelle Obama, um... Yeah, they're the main ones. But okay. hang on, there is actually loads. Denzel, obviously, massive mm. inspo. Um, Tony Robbins, I actually found really inspirational. I think he's really cool. Mm. Spoke on stage with him recently. He's really cool. Um, who else? You know, it's funny. There's not so many massively inspirational figures of me who are still alive. Mm. Um, there's a lot of people who inspire me, yes. And that are like literally loads who have people who I speak with on stage. And I'm like, oh, you inspire me. But... I think a lot of it is very ancient wisdom, you know, sure. like Egyptian knowledge or mm. like um, ancient scriptures, things like that. Yeah. What's your favorite time of day? Hmm. Hmm. I'm most productive in the morning, but I really love the afternoon when it's all said and done. Hmm. Just like I can go chill. Just like relax, offline. Breathe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not have to three, like, go four, wash five. the dishes and do things that yeah. you don't have to yeah. use your mind. Three, right? four, and five, that kind of time. Mm -hmm. What message would you like to give to world leaders? Spread more forgiveness and love and stop pushing such topics which are down people's throats, which, yes, we have to deal with, mm. but push forgiveness to people and love because those are the two things that will heal the world mm. i truly believe in that good message do you have a favorite quote that comes to mind oh my god loads um i'm gonna give you one which just feels like 
good right now. Mm-hmm. Happiness is like a butterfly. The more that you chase it, the more it eludes you. When you stop looking for it, it comes and rests softly on your shoulder. Hmm. Love it. What did you do as a kid that got you into trouble? Hmm. Oh my God. Definitely got drunk at like 13. Something ridiculous. <laughs> and like, oh my God. Okay, what did I get drunk on though? Bigger question. Uh-huh. So my parents had this like whole wine cabinet. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of, and it wasn't just wine that they bought and stuck on the shelf. It was like old wines that were like 50, 60 years old. And me went in there, bottom of the shelf. The ones that are the most rusty, the ones that have got most cobwebs on in the wine cellar are 100% the ones they won't notice. <laughs> so let me just take out this guy. Well, he's from like 1920. Like, who cares about this? Like, took it out. Mm. taste vile put it back it was like this is gross mm. then it's like obviously open oh you know got <laughs> <laughs> drinking red wine it was just the most horrendous oh thing stealing their God. wines yeah 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 my dad prestigious just, uh, too. God. and then i did the same thing with my mom's vogue magazines she had all the collections of Vogue over all the years, she collected them, they're mountains high, mountains high. And one day I wanted to redo my bedroom. So behind my bed frame on the wall, mm-hmm. I decided I wanted to stick Vogue, 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 Vogue. So I went and cut every title of Vogue of every magazine <laughs> and stuck them on my wall. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh boy. <laughs> my mom actually lost it with me and then I ran away that night and hid under my bed because I was so upset by what I'd done and was so scared that like I'd ruined her life because of this which I hadn't but like the reaction was bad so like I went under the bed and then she called the police and then the police came by which time I crawled out of the bed and I was like sorry mom Mm. (laughs) I was actually under the bed so it was like a double whammy of like you idiot (laughs) anyway yeah crazy things I love the stories thank you for sharing them What's the first thing you say to yourself when something doesn't go your way? That's okay. That's okay. Mm. That's just the story that it is right now. But everybody, everything is pure, unconditional love, ultimately, even if that's not the story that they choose right now. Hmm. What do you wish more people knew about you? Um, that, I'm, that I'm a human. Mm-hmm. Like, that I actually am human that i feel things that i cry that i i get emotional that i go through things and grow through things like anyone else does Hmm. is there such thing as a coincidence no everything is like destiny if you want everything is happening Mm -hmm. whether you know it or not whether you feel or not everything is aligned it's like when you meet up with a certain person it's not fluke mm. obviously they were brought into your path for you two to go on and do something great you just got to discover it you got to find it out exactly i truly believe that you know like if you're in an elevator with somebody there's a reason why you're there together 100 percent. like just investigate like just be curious like strike mm. a conversation right wow that's deep that's really looking at everything i agree right yeah mm-hmm. just kind of just be curious in life um, of all the things that you have accomplished in your life, what would you say is something that your mother is most proud of you of? Oh, my career as a mindset coach, helping people. Yeah. Uh-huh. Helping people to achieve their dreams and their goals. Hmm. Helping people to, I'm saving lives on stage last week. I'm saving lives in my teachings and my programs. She's proud of me for that because she's a psychologist counselor. So mm. she's like, you know, she really believes in it. And she's just like an all giving person, raised five of us. You know, she gave her life to raise us. So. Wow. Seems like a remarkable woman. And she's amazing. She's def- actually, one of my inspirations, I'd say, in, in, in some ways. Hmm. Well, Natasha, um, you are a firecracker of positivity. I am so honored that you came here to Hennessy Studios to be with us today. Um, again, get the book, Be It Until You Become It. Right? You guys will love it. It's it's honestly for someone who wants to take action and commit today. So if you have found anything that I have said interesting, download the book. Go mm-hmm. get the book on beitentilyoubecomeit.com. 
And when you get it right now, you get my free best-selling program for free. It's Do like, you? Yeah, it's See? completely free when you buy the book. There it is. So it's a gift. And you can win the chance of having a one-on-one -on -one with me, which is, I would say, going to be a very powerful place for somebody today. Awesome. And I'm honored that I had the one-on-one -on -one with you. And Thank for those you. that are listening, make sure you go follow her. 11 million followers on Instagram become 11 million and one and two and three. Thank Just you. keep growing because uh, you're so inspirational. So Thank you. Thank you again for coming. Thank you so much. It was amazing. I love your show and being here with you. Your energy is divine. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening.